It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's boy Millsy, back with Hometown Commander. We're back for another episode of Millsy Brews the Shore. I brew my version 1.0 deck list of a commander in front of us on my quest out brew the magic world. Today, we are continuing pre battle week for murders at Car Love Manor. And as the two previous days have done, and so will today and tomorrow. I'm releasing all of my Millsy Brews episodes alongside 10 card upgrades. You can find those up on the channel as well if you're interested in just a smaller upgrade for this deck. But this is my actual full-on um, uh, upgrade for the pre-con, making it into a standalone deck, adding some cards, and not really thinking about what cards we're taking in and out, but just making the deck the way I want to make it. And as always, the deck list will be down in the description to low, to, uh, below. Today we're talking about Nelly Borka, Impulsive Accuser, a 4-mana 2-4 human detective with Vigilance. It says whenever she attacks, suspect target creature, then goad all suspected creatures. It says the suspected creature has menace and cannot block. And then whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls deals con damage to one or more of your opponents, you and the controller of those creatures draw a card. Um, Nellie Bork has a couple interesting abilities, but at the end of the day, our deck cares about goading the creatures our opponents control. Goat itself is a really fun mechanic, forcing those creatures to attack and attack someone other than us if able, which can do a lot of damage to a table if you go to deck that really cares about combat. Where Goat tends to fail is where some strategies fail, where it requires your opponents to do something, and if your opponents can't establish their board states or have don't have a ton of creatures, well the Goat kind of falls off. So I would suggest you play Nelly Bork into a table that has lots of other players with other creatures, and if you can do that, I think Nelly Bork is going to be a ton of fun goading their creatures and throwing uh, some of the shade right around the table with uh, forcing our opponents to attack each other. So a lot of our deck cares about goading uh, our opponent's creatures, and, and this, I think, as a strategy, kind of uh, uh, completes two goals for us. One, forces those creatures to attack, which either might uh, get them destroyed in combat or tap them down so they can't block, and two, because the, those seizures are tapped down and potentially can't block, we can then hopefully get more of our damage through or make it harder for our opponents to deal with us attacking them if they're forced to attack other people. As always, when we're goading our opponents to do things, we may end up feeding someone else's fire with them being able to attack. What we're going to try to do is incentivize our opponents to attack other people while we get ourselves into a position to take over the game or potentially win a game uh, while our opponents are tapped out and attacking each other. There's a lot of goad uh, type abilities in the deck. We're not going to go over all of them, but what I want to talk about is some goad abilities that specifically stop those creatures from blocking. We have the suspect mechanic, so um, we can do that, and we have a couple other creatures in the deck, like um, Agris Cost from the main set, who says whenever ETBs are attacks, we choose up to one two creature. If it's suspected, we exile it, otherwise we suspect it. This is just going to allow us to get more creatures suspected or remove suspected creatures if that's what we want to do. We have some other creatures that just straight up goad creatures. But I like cards like Bothersome Quasi. This is from the uh, Baldur's Gate Commander decks, which says goaded creatures your opponent's control can't block. And whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to goad something. So this is cool because it's going to, again, add that layered benefit of our goaded creatures our opponent's control cannot block us. So we can attack them for free and get in to some good damage. Same thing with something like Taunt the Rampart, which goads all creatures our opponent's control, but until under our next turn, those creatures can't block. So then it's giving uh, basically pseudo giving our creatures indestructible and allowing us to just take advantage of uh, hopefully a free swing in and we can do that a couple different ways first i'm going to talk about creatures that maybe might entice our opponents to really want to hit somewhere else uh, and maybe give themselves a benefit for it as well um, and then we're going to talk about just cards that are going to hopefully help us end the game as we uh, try to hit them so we have a couple of effects like Nils, Disciple, and Force so that has a really intriguing choice for our opponent. It's the beginning of our end step. For each player, we can put a counter up to one target creature that player controls. And then it says, each creature with one or more counters on it can't attack us or planeswalkers we control unless their opponent pays X, where X is the number of counters on that creature. Nils is a really fun card because it stops... Are there are our opponents from hitting us with certain creatures, which can be just as good as them not being able to hit us at all, depending on what our opponents are playing. If our opponent's playing a Voltron deck that's trying to make one creature big, well, we just start putting counters on that creature, and then it's going to get harder for them to attack us. 
This kind of goes in line with something like Orzhov uh, Adkivis, which is in the deck, which is at the beginning of your upkeep. Each player may put two counters on a creature they control. If a player does, creatures that player's controls can attack you or planeswalkers until your next turn. This can kind of convince our opponents to put uh, you know counters on their things and basically stop them from hitting us all together uh, while we kind of amass our, our board and get ourselves going. We get fun things like life of the party. Whenever it attack, or sorry, whenever it enters the battlefield, if it's not a token, each opponent creates a token that's a copy of it, and those um, tokens are then goaded for the rest of the game, kind of forcing them to be hitting each other with it, which could be kind of fun. And we have other things that can, um, you know, we can have other things that 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 goad creatures. In fact, there's a lot of those types of abilities in the deck, but it's the um, Goading and forcing them not to be able to block or, or convincing them to attack each other that has a, a lot of value for us. A card that I really like, one of the new ones, is Take the Bait. It says, cast a spell only during an opponent's turn, only during combat. Prevent all combat damage will be dealt to you and planeswalkers you control this turn. Untap all attacking creatures and goad them. After this phase, there's additional combat. What I like about Take the Bait is it basically is going to stop someone from trying to knock us out of the game and tell them, hey, go hit somebody else for free. Congratulations, you have another combat. You get all the triggers, you get all of the, um, they get all their triggers again if they have combat triggers and things like that, but this could be the political piece we need um, to convince players to go otherwise. Our go deck is going to have to care a little bit about the politics because we obviously just don't want someone slamming into us, um, but um, hopefully we can convince someone to hit somebody else. Uh, come up with this is an interesting reprint in the deck. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to you and planeswalkers you control this turn. If damage from a creature source was prevented that way, it deals that much damage to that creature. If damage from a non-token or creature source was prevented this way, it deals that much damage to that source's controller. Um, this is a really fun card because it can hose two specific things. One, a big attack and just basically wipe all the creatures that are attacking. But number two, if someone goes off on a huge impact tremors play or a huge, you know, loop where they're making a ton of uh, damage go on the stack at once, well, we could just come up and, and potentially just risk knocking them out if they continue to do that. We get things like Deflecting Palm, which can put a big creatures with a commander damage or sorry combat damage back we also have something like immortal obligation which brings a creature back from an opponent's graveyard back under their control goad it and it can't attack us or block creatures we control this again could um, convince our opponents to put that creature somewhere else to use it somewhere else and take a big advantage of it and i and again i like pieces like this because at the right table with the right mindset you can really influence your opponents to do something else um and have fun. The one thing I'm very happy that this deck did was reprint the vows and the impetuses in the deck. These are uh, auras that you could put on creatures and have them not be able to attack you with the vows or with the impetuses, just goad them in general. And it actually gives them a benefit. Like Martial Impetus gives each other creature that um, that's attacking one of your opponents plus one plus one until end of turn when they attack with that creature, you know, which, which again kind of helps push them in a direction other than uh, ours. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, one of the new cards that I really like that kind of, again, continues us down this goad route is Hot Pursuit. A two minute shaman that says when it comes in, we suspect our creature and opponent controls. As long as it remains on the battlefield, that creature is also goaded, which is just double protection for. If we don't have Nelly um, to goad that creature. But then it says, the beginning of combat on your turn, if two or more players have lost the game, gain control of all goaded or suspected creatures to a turn on tap, then they gain haste. So this is effectively an insurrection type effect that we can goad all of our opponent's creatures once we get down to us and somebody else. And that's a way for us to potentially end the game if we can get ourselves there. Noble Heritage acts a lot like Nils, putting counters on creatures. And then those creatures, uh, those creatures control just, you know, get, aren't able to attack us or aren't able to hurt us with those things. Uh, Redemption Arc is another way for us to go to creature, but the cool part about this one is it adds the option for us to exile that creature and kind of load that over our opponent's heads. Hey, you get this creature and you get to go to and, and attack other people, uh, but you, you can't attack us with it. Rise of the Raging Storm gets a reprint here. This is a fun card that gives people a 5-1 with... Uh, trample at, in haste at the end of every at the start of every turn, but they have to sacrifice it at the end step. But it can't attack us, and that's pretty cool because then again, just more convincing our opponents to attack. 
each other. Uh, there's more of those effects in the deck, and we could talk for hours about that, but let's talk about the ways we're going to hopefully help end the game. When we're playing things like Aurelia, the War Leader, and then Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, came in the deck. These are cards that are going to help us hurt our opponents early by giving us double the combats and Gisela doubling the amount of damage that would be dealt to an opponent and having the amount of damage that would be dealt to us. What I like about uh, Gis Gisela so much is that when our opponents attack each other, that damage is doubled, and so this will help kind of hopefully poke our opponents in the right direction to hurt each other. We're also playing that fiendish duo reprint that came in the precon to just... Whenever a source would deal damage to an opponent, deals double that damage to that player instead. And again, these type of effects are convincing our opponents to attack each other and take advantage of these kind of uh, situations we're giving them to have a good time. Um, that's about all I can think of as far as um, some notable cards that are really important. We're playing our normal everyday Boros cards, protection spells for our creatures, and other things. But let's get into a, a quick playtest. We're keeping a three lander with Arcane Signet, Clever Concealment, one of my favorite protection spells in Modern Commander, just phasing out any number of permanents we want. Impetus and a Soul Snare, a great card that we can play early, and then sack later to um, exile a creature that's attacking us for a little bit of protection. But hey, turn when we draw Vow Duty, again, great card, gonna start goading something. Um, in a sense that it can't attack us, but it would be good for our opponent to attack somebody else, giving it plus two, plus two in Vigilance. I think I'll just get the Spires down here, turn one, it comes in tapped, and um, we've got really nothing to do anything anyway but Soul Snare, but I don't really think putting ourselves out for it uh, or waiting, you know, that is that great. But here, I kind of like the Arcane Signet into the Soul Snare. That way we have the Soul Snare online, people know about it and they have to decide what they're going to do. Uh, turn four here, if we play this the mountain, we, we can play Nelly Borka, which I think is what we'd want to do. We'd want to get our commander going. Since she can't attack this turn, we can't spec somebody until next turn, but we can potentially get this draw if somebody started the game quick and they're attacking, so that's always cool. Let's say for the purposes of this one, nobody attacked each other yet. It's still too early in the game, but we will keep that effect in mind. Four mana, both of our tap options. Um, aren't very good. We have the Vow of Duty if we want to, or the Impetus if somebody has a good creature yet. I'd say if they don't, I don't really see much other than just thrown in the Married Landscape. If they do have a good creature here, then, um, you know, we could get the Landscape or the Boros Garrison down and, and attach one of these and still leave up mana for uh, Soul Snare. Let's just, um, since we're running out of white sources, we don't have a ton of them, I'd say let's... Um, Let's get down the garrison by picking up a mountain, just that way we have another white source besides Arcane Signet and the Spires. We're trying to even out our, our sources here. Uh, let's just say we impetus something, I guess. Let's say our opponent has a creature that we think is relevant there, and we can attack with um, Nelly here, um, suspecting a creature, goading it, and then maybe, let's say on this turn cycle, we get a draw off of Nelly Borko. Draw for turn, get that mountain down. Now we're at three, four, five, six mana. We have a Chaos Warp there. The Boros Signet's pretty great, getting some more mana down. Now we have the Chaos Warp and the, the Clever Concealment up. I really would have loved another creature here, but that's okay. I like having removal. We can turn the Spires into a creature if we want to, but I don't really see the point of that there. I would say just attack with Borka again if we can find a good attack. Goad something else. Um, hopefully create some chaos. Wow, we get a generous gift. Always good to draw removal. I just don't want to draw removal two turns in a row, but I guess we're just waiting for removal. Maybe this turn we put the Vow of Duty on something. Keep the gift and the, the chaos warp up just again. Again, try to get an attack with Nelly in. If we can't, that's okay. Um, we're, unfortunately, this go around not in the spot to do that, but I would, I would still leave the mana up. Let's say on our opponent's cycle we get at least one. Temple of Triumph, this turn again, I would love another creature. 26 creatures, I think, of the deck. Kind of odd we haven't hit one yet, but that's just the Moxfield Shuffler. And again, this turn, I would probably do something like Mob Rule. Um, and, you know, maybe this draws us cards or, you know, does some damage to things. Let's say it draws us at least one. And again, maybe attack with her if we can. I feel like this is an odd... Um, playtest here because we just have yet to see any other creatures in fact we've been really what, um okay br going what 20 cards deep to get to brash taunter but anyway um that's kind of where i think the deck shines goading our opponents things forcing them to hit each other and trying to sit back until maybe we 
amass enough resources to make a big attack. But let me know, what do you think of Nelly Borka down in the comment section below? I'd love to hear what you think, and I will catch you guys next time.